Let's say our user here, Mary, would like to gain access to the resources on application server one. And let's assume that she doesn't trust the network she's on. She doesn't know who might be able to listen in on her communication with that app server. In fact, her network is built on TCP IP. And that is certainly not a protocol that was built with security in mind. So she's quite justified in being suspicious. Now, how is Mary going to prove to the app server that she is indeed Mary? And how is she going to know that she's really talking to the actual app server? This is where Kerberos comes in. At the heart of Kerberos is the KDC, or Key Distribution Center. And the KDC consists of two main components. First, the authentication server, or AS. And then there's the ticket granting server, or TGS. And of course, there are Kerberos client libraries on Mary's desktop and on the app server and in other places on the network. As its name implies, the key distribution center is about keys, in particular long-lived symmetric keys. A key is symmetric when what that key encrypts can be decrypted by that very same key. So where do these keys come from and where are they stored? Well, Mary's key is stored in her head, her memory. So to start off the Kerberos authentication process, Mary will enter in her password. And that password is then sent through a hashing function and turned into a long-lived symmetric key. Let's say its lifetime is 90 days, the typical lifetime of a password. And we'll show that key, Mary's key, as this blue key. Our application server also has a symmetric key stored in what is called a key tab file. It's not practical for a server to have a password, so the key tab file simply contains a randomly generated, long-lived symmetric key. And we'll depict that key as this black key. Finally, our ticket granting server, or TGS, has a long-lived symmetric key as well, and we'll depict that here as a red key. We'll find out soon enough what this ticket granting server is all about. Now, when Mary originally chose her password, and when the app server's key was created in the key tab file, the authentication server served as the provisioning agent for those keys. And when the TGS had its key created, that authentication server served the same function. And the KDC, in particular the authentication server, maintains a copy of all the keys in the KDC's sphere of control, otherwise known as the KDC realm. The effectiveness of Kerberos, as you'll soon see, depends almost entirely on whether an organization can ensure that each key exists only in two places, on the KDC and with the Kerberos principle, the principle being either a user or a server. Now back to Mary, who's requesting access to the application server. After she enters her password and derives her blue key, her computer constructs a package. And that package consists of her user ID, what she is requesting, and her address, all of which are in the clear. But to prove that she is indeed Mary, meaning to do something only Mary could have done, she generates a timestamp and encrypts that timestamp with her blue key. Now, all of that is sent over the unsecured network to the authentication server. Once the authentication server receives that package, it sees that someone is claiming to be Mary. So it looks up Mary's blue key and sees whether it can decrypt the timestamp. If it can, well, this must be Mary. Now that's great, but it does Mary no good in her quest to authenticate to the app server. So more work needs to be done. The authentication server then creates two packages, both of which will eventually find their way back to Mary. For the first package, the authentication server creates a random, short-lived session key shown here in yellow. This will be used in a subsequent step. Then it adds a timestamp, the name of the ticket granting server, and an expiration time. And if this package is going to be sent to Mary, it needs to be encrypted. So all of this, of course, is encrypted with her blue key. The second package is called the ticket granting ticket commonly referred to as the TGT. And you'll see later that this will serve as Mary's passport throughout the Kerberos realm. 
The TGT consists of a copy of that yellow session key, Mary's user ID, her address, a timestamp, and an expiration time. By the way, you'll see expiration times throughout each Kerberos step. Whenever you deal with session keys and encrypted packages, you want to impose a lifetime. The more time you give a hacker to decipher encryption keys or encrypted text, the more likely they are to actually get those keys. Now you'll also see timestamps in many Kerberos steps. This mitigates the risk of someone capturing your Kerberos traffic and replaying it back to the KDC or a server at a later time. Finally, to protect the TGT, the authentication server grabs the red TGS key from its database and uses it to encrypt the TGT. Now, at this point, you'd think that the TGT would be sent to the ticket-granting server. In actuality, the TGT, along with the first package, is sent to Mary. Once Mary receives these packages, she can use her blue key to decrypt the first package, get the name of the ticket-granting server, and, more importantly, she gets the yellow session key. Mary also now has the TGT, but she can't see anything because it's encrypted with the ticket-granting server's red key. But Mary can now create a new package, stating simply that her user ID is Mary. She then encrypts that with the yellow session key. Finally, Mary constructs a clear text, unencrypted message, stating that she'd like to get access to the app server. She then sends all three messages to the ticket granting server. Note here that Mary maintains a copy of the yellow session key as well as the TGT for future use. The TGS can now use its red key to decrypt the TGT and get the yellow session key. With that session key, it can then decrypt Mary's encrypted package. The TGS now compares information in both packages for a match. And if it does indeed match, then it must be Mary that sent those messages, and Mary must have checked out with the authentication server earlier on. The TGS can now attempt to honor Mary's request to gain access to the app server. It'll then go fetch the app server's black key. It then creates the first of two packages. The first one, it will furnish with a second randomly generated session key that, again, will be used in a subsequent step. It throws in Mary's user ID, her address, a timestamp, and an expiration time. And similar to what was done with the TGT, it will use the app server's black key to encrypt that package. And we call this the service ticket. The TGS then creates the second package, furnishes it with a copy of the second session key, adds the app server name and an expiration time. And so only Mary can see this package. It uses the yellow session key to encrypt it. It can now safely send these two packages to Mary. And as before, she can decrypt the package on the left, but she is not able to decrypt the package on the right, the service ticket. So she goes ahead and decrypts the package on the left, and from that, she gets the second session key. Now she'd like to prove to the app server that she is indeed Mary, so she constructs a package and includes her user ID and timestamp and encrypts all of that with the second session key. And now both packages can be sent to the app server. Note here that Mary maintains a copy of the second session key and the service ticket in case she needs to do this again in the near future. Once the app server has both packages, it uses its black key to decrypt the service ticket. It now has the second session key and uses that to decrypt Mary's second package. If information in both packages check out, well, then this must be Mary on the other end. And as a last step, so the application server can prove to Mary that it is indeed the app server that she requested, it constructs a simple package consisting of its name and a timestamp. It encrypts that package with the second session key and sends it to Mary. If Mary can decrypt that package, then that must be the real app server on the other end. Now, because Mary cached that service ticket 
any subsequent visits back to that app server, she can always pull that from her cache and present it to the app server for reauthentication within, of course, the expiration time period. And Mary also cached the TGT, which means that if she has to authenticate to another application server, another server, that TGT simply needs to be presented back to the ticket granting server and that whole service ticket issuance process we just reviewed would be repeated in the background. Mary would not have to enter in her password again. This is all assuming that this is happening within a certain expiration period. And finally, it should be noted that each principal, whether that's a user or an application server, has more than one symmetric key. We saw with Mary that we had a blue key based on her password, or with the application server, the black key based on what was in a key tab file. In actuality, Kerberos generates a unique key for each of the cryptographic algorithms that are supported within the realm. So if you look into a key tab file, you would see a symmetric key or an indication that a symmetric key existed for, let's say, the AES cryptographic algorithm. So that key would be an AES, let's say, a 256-bit key. You'd see another key that accommodated the RC4H Mac algorithm, another one that accommodated or took care of the triple DES algorithm. So you'll see a series of keys depending on what the client server communication demands. Certain communication would demand, let's say, an AES key as the means of cryptographic communication, others maybe RC4. So quite often you'll see multiple keys per principle. And that's Kerberos, believe it or not, at a high level. It can get much more complicated, of course, when we talk about these cryptographic operations. There's issues of policy, how long do you want your keys to last, expiration, algorithms that you support. But hopefully what we saw here is how Kerberos can provide a single sign-on strong authentication mechanism for end users and principals or servers or applications.